I recently busted a product I've never busted before in my entire life. It's 2017 Topps Pro Debut, although really they should have just called it Top Series 1.75. I'm Christopher from Crack and Wax, and this is my gut reaction. Remember, these gut reaction product review videos contain my opinions and my opinions alone, although I'm pretty sure I'm the only one with these opinions. Also, the ratings that I give here are completely arbitrary and they don't mean a single thing. Pluses for the things I like and minuses for the things that I don't. With that in mind, let's see that rating board. My god, there is always somebody mowing their lawn in my neighborhood. You guys hear that? As I mentioned earlier, I've never opened this product before. I don't collect this stuff and that's really only because I collect major league cards. I'm not a minor league collector. I just happen to be one of those weird collectors that would prefer to see a well photoshopped version of the major league uniform on top of their minor league uniform, even if it's very obvious that they've never put one of those uniforms on before. And yes, obviously there are going to be people who collect minor league cards. I mean, there is a reason why they produce Pro Debut and Heritage Minor League. Let's be honest here, most of the people collecting this stuff are either player collectors or major league team collectors. And that's what's frustrating about this set is that for the most part, it's really difficult to tell which of these minor league teams belong to which major league counterpart. Yeah, a lot of the cards in the back will say acquired by, drafted by, so on and so forth, but it doesn't always tell the whole story about where that minor league team goes. Yeah, it might say where the player was drafted from or how they were acquired, but that doesn't exactly mean that that's which major league team that the appropriate minor league team on the card belongs to. Now for a group breaker such as myself who is going to sort these by major league team, this could get quite difficult. Now there are going to be some teams where it's going to be more obvious than others, so the Tampa Yankees of course would go with the New York Yankees. However, it can get kind of confusing. Take for example the Indianapolis Indians. One might think that that goes to the Cleveland Indians. That's not the case at all. In fact, the Indianapolis Indians are a Pirates affiliate. Now, I'm glad I did the research or else I would have had those cards in the wrong pile. It doesn't say on the back of the card that they're a Pirates affiliate. Unless you get lucky and it says, oh, drafted by the Pirates. But, you know, you can't always count on that. Another place where this is aggravating is with a team called the Brevard County Manatees. Correct me if I'm wrong, but according to my research, the team doesn't even exist anymore. If it wasn't for a little bit of digging, I would have never known that those cards should have gone to the Milwaukee Brewers. Not adding that little detail of what the Major League Affiliate team was made sorting this one box pretty hard for me, and I'm so glad I didn't do a full case. So that's going to get a minus. The photography selection here is quite unfortunate. Now, I do realize that uh, you don't have the added benefit of having really super high-end uh, professional photographers at your minor league events at all times. However, the selection there either looks really limited or like they just didn't give a damn. Now, it goes without saying that some of these minor league venues aren't going to look as gorgeous as, say, Target Field, and you are going to see some chain link fence, and that's not really what my gripe is about. My gripe is about... A guy standing in a stairwell. My gripe is about very blurry photography, such as on this Gonsalves photo. Poor photography on a professional Topps product? That gets a minus. I want to talk a little bit about the design. I know me talking about design, right? Who would have thought? Now, I'm not going to be reviewing the design that they used. I'm going to be reviewing the fact that they used the design that they used, and that's why I called it Top Series 1.75. I can completely understand the perception that minor league cards are held in lower regard than major league cards. But in my point of view, Top should have a little bit more respect for their minor league license. I mean, they only produce two minor league license sets per year, as far as I'm aware. One being Top's Pro Debut, the other one being Top's Heritage Minor League. For both products, Topps is merely co-opting designs that have already been used on other products throughout the year. The offense to Topps Pro Debut is much, much worse. Topps is co-opting a design that is already going to be used in four other baseball products and at least one wrestling product during the calendar year. Topps had a real chance to make this minor league set special and separate it from its other baseball products, and they failed. This gets a minus. On the plus side, I thought that they did a really good job with the hits and the inserts. I thought they were really fun. I also thought it was really cool to pull an authentic base card. And, and by base card, I mean there was a piece of base in the card. I, I, I didn't get 
that excited about pulling a, a, a base card. Paying homage to minor league's wacky jersey nights, such as Home Improvement Night, I thought was an excellent touch and shows just how fun minor league games can be. This nice touch was about the only thing special about this set and really deserved to have a lot more of it like this. So it's gonna get a plus. On the flip side though, if you're gonna have a cool jersey hit and you're gonna show a player on the front, it would be really nice if you would tell us who that player is. That's gonna get a minus. For the particular box that I broke, I ended up with nearly a full set, some good parallels, no short prints, but no dupes. Gosh, that never happens, and I thought that was pretty awesome. That's a plus. That, right there, is my wife interrupting me. Topps Pro Debut is a product that definitely has a lot of potential, but at least for this year, Topps just didn't seem to do enough to make it seem special, even little touches. Like telling you which major league team is affiliated with the minor league team on the card. Putting foil on the Topps logo, and especially giving it its own design, those would be things that would make me feel like Topps really cares about this product. This year, I don't feel like they care at all. That being said, I really felt that 2017 Topps Pro Debut is only shoebox worthy. What did you think of 2017 Topps Pro Debut? Let us know in the poll at the top of this video. Ratings from top to bottom are as follows. Slabbed and graded, top loader, binder, shoebox, and bicycle spoke. If you haven't done so already, be sure to check out this video of me actually busting this box of 2017 Topps Pro Debut. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this, and let me know in the comments your suggestions for lip balm. And as always, keep cracking that wax.